All right, so Ben has been busy setting up all this stuff for our fan that we're gonna be installing in our camper van, and I have no idea what he's got going on here. I have no idea what we're doing with this fan, so I'm gonna ask all the questions um, that you're probably wondering too. So let's, I'm gonna do a little interview, Ben. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ben, what's the project for today? In this video, we're gonna show you how to install the Max Fan vent in your camper van. So we decided to go with the Max <laughs> Fan vent. There's two ma major fans in the market. There's Max Fan and Fantastic Fan. We decided to go with the Max Fan Deluxe 7000K model because it has a handy dandy remote control. And it has 10 speeds from super quiet to super powerful. It has a rain cover vent that can open and close. It's one of the, kind of like the Cadillac of the, the fans of the market. So let's talk about the pieces that you need to install your fan. Obviously you need the fan itself. Duh. <laughs> Duh. And then you'll need the flange that goes underneath the fan that actually secures it. You had to order that one separately, right? No, so this, these two came together. So these okay. three pieces come together with the Max fan. This piece is a special customized flange that goes on top of a ProMaster van. Flange. Some people actually put their fan at the front of their van near the cab or close to the kitchen so that it can uh, get rid of the smoke when they're cooking. We, like we said, are putting it near our bed so that we have better ventilation when we sleep. You do decide to put your fan near your kitchen or near your cab. You don't actually need this adapter flange. This, like we explained earlier, is only here to make a flat surface. Whereas if you're doing it up here, you already have this flat surface where you can put your fan. So it's up to you whether you put your fan near your kitchen or by your bed. One of those big decisions you just have to make when you're building camper van. This is the interior ring that goes up into your ceiling of your van. Depending on how the thickness of your, your insulation or your, your ceiling, you'll be able to cut this plastic down so that it fits the thickness of your of your van. So you just insert that one from the inside? Yes, so once you have completed the whole fan install and completed your ceiling, you'll be able to insert that. So that's the last piece of the puzzle. It's a little bit ways down the road, yeah. Okay, can you tell me what PPE means? Cause I'm weirded out. <laughs> PPE is personal protective equipment, like your goggles, your gloves, long sleeves. Uh, you are a nerd. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so obviously you need uh, some tape and a tape measure. You need to measure all standard sizes of fans for camper vans or RVs. They're all 14 by 14 inch square holes. And so you want to be able to measure that hole and then you can tape it out and mark it. Once you mark it, you'll be able to drill a hole into the top of the, your van and then cut it out with a jigsaw. So are you doing like holes on the corners? Yep, so I'll do four holes in the corners and then I'll just basically do a connect, connect the dots. Connect the dots, sweet, cool. okay. Uh, and then once everything is cut, it's gonna be a little rough edge, so I'll be able to file it down, and then do a little wire brush, and then uh, also use some acetone to kind of clean the surface, make sure it's really clean. I'll also use a scotch Brite to kind of rub, rub down that surface. Uh, we'll use some primer, some Rust-Oleum uh, metal primer to make sure that there's not gonna be any rust on the interior of that cut. And once I let all that dry and, and kind of get ready for the next step is actually applying the adapter flange. I'll use some 3M window weld, which is super thick stuff. It's gonna, it's gonna be super hard to squeeze out with the caulking gun, but I'll, uh, I'll do what I can. Work those muscles. Yeah, and so I'll, I'll apply that, that flange, let it sit on there, probably sit it overnight. I'll, I'll tarp it over so nothing gets on the inside. Next day I'll come out, I'll attach the uh, receiving flange with some... There's two flanges? There's two flanges. <laughs> I'll uh, attach the receiving flange with some butyl tape. Huh? It's kind of sticky stuff. Basically it rolls out and it's nice and a little sticky on the inside. Set that down, drill pi pilot holes, take these screws, drill them onto the holes here, and then I'll let that sit 
I'll throw some flex seal on top, so a nice seal. Yeah, this is like the as seen on TV thing that it's crazy uh, waterproof and, and resistant, and it's a good sealer. So I'll throw that on top with all the screws. I'll take the fan, put that on top, locate these holes on the four sides and screw it in, and bada bing, bada boom. Bob's your uncle, we escape. What do you think? That was a lot of products you just listed off. It's a lot of stuff. If someone wants to know where they can get these or what products they need, where can they find that list? We'll put, definitely put links on the, in the comments below or in the description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to write a comment and I'll try to get back to you as best I can. And please like this video below. That will really help us continue to create these information packed videos for you. And, and don't, don't forget, forget to, to subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> So like we said, we're gonna put our fan above our bed area or our seating area instead of above the kitchen. We figure it's gonna be a lot better circulation for while we're sleeping and uh, working on our computers on the benches here. We get sweaty easily. <laughs> One thing to consider when you're installing the, the square here, you wanna stay away from the structural support for the ceiling because you'll use that as the furring for your, uh, for your ceiling. So you just give a little bit of space, maybe like an inch or two, for that 14 by 14 square that you're going to be cutting out. Also, the fan has a large rain cover that sticks out about 8 inches past that 14 by 14 square. So you want to make sure that you have enough space on the end of your vehicle to cover that 8 inches. Hand me the wire brush, the cock gun, the GoPro, the file, PPE glove, 3M window well, the flange. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> and pencil. My face is getting so red. I'm getting a head rush. That's it, except for the saw. So I used the adapter flange to kind of mark out where I want that hole to be cut. And I've taped it, taped it down. And just to triple check, I've marked out seven inches by seven inches. So smack dab in the middle. I'm going to use the drill to drill through this hole, and then I'm gonna check underneath to make sure that I don't have anything in the way seven inches in any direction. All right, here we go. Don't screw up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stay up here while Ben goes down and checks that hole because it is hard to get down off of this van. Can I have the tape measure? Sure, come back. <laughs> All right, so is that hole in the right place? Exactly where I want it to be. So now I'm gonna drill in the four holes in the corners and then use a jigsaw to cut those straight lines and cut a hole in our van. Connect those dots. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a jigsaw to cut the four straight lines. I, in here I have a Bosch metal cutting blade. I'm gonna go as slow as possible to try to make as smooth of a cut as I can. Here we go. Wishing you luck. <laughs> so I just made the first cut and it got a little wobbly. And so I'm placing some tape on here to hopefully keep it from shaking too much. And just straight up falling in when you cut it all the way through. <laughs> This chunk of metal is starting to vibrate quite a lot, so we're putting tape all around it. And by we, I mean Ben. <laughs> What's happened to your tape job, Ben? We need stronger tape, Captain. <laughs> I do have the power. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna hold, but we've got one more cut. What am I? How do you feel, Ben? Feel pretty good. <laughs> and you had a bag there to catch it. That was pretty smart. I know. Hello! All right, so now that we got that hole cut, how difficult was that? I know you were pretty nervous. It actually wasn't too bad. It went pretty smoothly with that Bosch blade, the metal cutting blade. The only difficult part was these ridges going up and over them that really started vibrating like crazy. I would recommend to end on one of the straight edges so that you have a nice, easy guide all the way through. Otherwise, it'll just... <laughs> all right, so what's the next step? Next step is to file down the edges, make them a little smooth, and then we're going to put a, on a little acetone. And then what does gonna, that do? Just clean is, it? Just to kind of clean the whole surface. Uh, we'll use a little sock rag. <laughs> That's my old dirty sock. <laughs> and then all this exposed metal, we want to make sure that that is sealed. So we're going to use this primer to seal that. It's going to take a couple minutes to let that dry. And then we'll 
start putting it on the flange. Burn, baby, burn. Sand, baby, sand. The next step is to scotch bright around probably about a quarter inch or of where the flange is going to sit. And that is to uh, just kind of dull the paint, paint a little bit. And now I'm using a rag and acetone to kind of clean up the area where the flange is going to be placed. So I've filed, scotch brighted, and cleaned out the hole. Next step is to use this primer so it keeps a nice seal from rusting. All right, our hole is ready. The primer has already cured. Now I'm going to use this 3M uh, window weld to secure the flange. I'm going to place it all the way around the flange and then flip it over and place it onto the hole. Let it sit there for a little bit, just giving it a little bit of pressure. Clean up the edges and then we're going to let that sit overnight. We attach some plastic wrap or rather bubble wrap to the bottom side of the the fan hole and now we're going to take that off so that we can take a look and how everything cured all right so just sum up what we did yesterday is we cut out the 14 by 14 hole and glued on the adapter flange i do want to point out that that 3m window weld stuff is really messy and it kind of gets everywhere i did it my best to clean it up as best as possible but i still kind of got a little messy all right, so now we're going to install the receiving flange onto the adapter flange. And then on top of that, we're going to put the fan. Yes. So first, what we're going to, what we're going to do is put this butyl tape. Basically, it's just it rolls out nice and smooth and put it all along the edges. Uh, quick tip, if this stuff is super sticky, like if it's really hot out, you can throw it in your freezer for 10, 15 minutes, and then it'll be a lot more pliable and easy to work with. Just kind of press down on the corners as, as you go around. Does it, is it like um, silly putty? Kinda? It is kind of like silly putty. Ah, I thought it was tape. Yeah, it's super. But it is like a pliable putty. Yeah. I have a little bit of overlap, but it basically fits the exact right length for the flange. And this was ordered along with the flange, so it came with it. Yes, so the butyl tape came along with the adapter flange. Adapter flange, okay, cool. So when you install the receiving flange, you need to make sure that these metal clips, all four of them, are on the sides of the van. So on either side, not front and back, side to side. So you place it on there. So I have also conveniently put the seam of the butyl tape in the rear of the van so that there's no seam in the front when we're, when we're driving and water could get in. So the seam is in the very back. All right, so now we just place it right in the square. Should be pretty easy. Yeah. And does that hold it in there pretty tight then? Yeah, you want to push it down and some of the butyl tape may squeeze out the sides, but that's okay, you can always just trim that off. So now I'm going to make a pilot hole on all 16 of the holes around the flange. Just want to make sure it goes through the adapter flange and the metal of the van. All right, so now we're going to screw down the flange with these screws that came with the fan. Notice in the packet, though, there's a one inch screw and then a three quarter inch screw. The one inch screw is what you're going to use for the flange. And then the three quarter inch screw, there's only four of these in the packet. They're going to go into the four sides into the clips when you attach the fan. All 16 of them are nice and screwed in, nice and tight. Some of the butyl tape kind of squeezed out, but I trimmed that off, cleaned it all up, and now I'm gonna put some of this Flex Seal on just to water, waterproof and seal the tops of the screws so that they don't rust, and also kind of waterproof the entire thing so that no water gets through. I just sprayed the Flex Seal on top. You can kind of see this little plasticky coat layer over the top of the screws and kind of along the edge of the flange so that that's going to be nice and water sealed all the way around. Now that I've weatherproofed the flange with that flex seal all the way around, I did two coats and let it dry. Now it's time to place the fan on top of the flange and connect it with those four screws. I've been told by the internet that we need to bump these screws up maybe like a quarter or an eighth of an inch so that it fits into the the groove in the fan. Bumping these up, just taking a little screwdriver. <clears throat> up a little bit. 
now I just have to open the fan all the way using the rotator knob and that will give me access to the four screws that I can secure it to the flange. Take this knob, open this way. Now it is fully open. Time to put it on. All right, the fan fully open. You can just easily slide it in. Make sure that the wires go inside. Just like this. All the way on, just like that. All right, with the fan fully open, we have access to these four screws, two on each side. We're gonna take the three quarter inch screw that came with the fan and insert, insert it into the four screw holes. So let's get that all lined up. So that's how you install the Max Air fan to the top side of your, of your van. If you have any questions about how to install this to the top, please write in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Don't forget to like this video and please subscribe to our channel to get more info on how to build your own camper van. All right, so there's been a few things since we installed our Max fan uh, to our ceiling of our, of our van. The last thing we need to do is create a wooden frame around the fan and this will help support our ceiling and give us a, something to work with when we're installing the interior ring. To give you a visual of what our frame is gonna look like, I have laid it out on the floor here. We have the 14 across beams and then the supports that go from the back wall all the way to the middle frame of the van. When installing your ceiling boards, you wanna make sure that you have it flush up against the frame that you've built around your ceiling fan so that when you put the interior ring that fits right up against the ceiling fan, it'll actually be able to fit in there and then you'll attach the ring to your ceiling board. All right, the last step to install your Max Air fan is to install your garnish trim ring, the ring that goes inside, connects to your ceiling. What you have to do first is measure the distance between your Max Air fan and then your ceiling, uh, the surface of your ceiling, and then you wanna add one half inch to that and then you'll measure that on the garnish trim ring. I have mine marked in pencil right there and I'll show you how to do that. So take a tape measure and measure from each corner of the Max Air fan down to the top of your ceiling. For me it's about two and a half inches. Yours might be longer or shorter depending on the thickness of your ceiling. So you want to go through each corner of your ceiling to measure that and then place that onto your uh, garnish trim ring. So you'll take the two and a quarter inches and mark it on your garnish trim ring plus an extra half inch. So you can see I've marked at two and three quarters inch. And I've gone done that all the way around on each of the corners. The next step is to trace a line across and cut that down to size. The last step to install the fan is to screw on the interior ring. It just needs those four screws that comes with the fan. They have a white cap on the top, so they're easy to identify. Probably the last screws that you have left in the, in the kit. I'm gonna go grab those screws right now and then we'll finish installing. All right, fast forward a few months and our Max Air Fan has been working wonderfully. It keeps us really cool in the summer months and with our bunk window here, it gives us nice ventilation throughout the whole van. We really hope this video was helpful. If it was, give us a thumbs up. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. If you have any questions, comment below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and we hope you have a cool day. Our bippa doobie. And <laughs> And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> By the way, I like your knee pads. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sexy. Yeah, keep that PPE on the plane. <laughs> the what? what? <laughs> Never used that word in my life. Um, anyway. Hello. <laughs> so let's talk about the pieces that you need to install your van. Your fan? <laughs> your fan? Your van? Your fan, your fan, your fan. <laughs>